You got to get stingy with your time. You no longer have free time. Time away from work is no longer, it's no longer free time. And, and I felt, when I told my mom that, when I was cause I lived with my mom when I was working at Quiznos, and I told her, I was like, she's like, you need to get some rest. And she was right. I need to get rest. I need to balance it. You got to take care of your, your, your health. Your health is your ultimate wealth, right? Um, but you, you no longer have time to, to kick it with your homies. You no longer have, I mean, it might sound really morbid, but you no longer have time to do all the things that everybody does in their 20s, you know. And there's a lot of things that I missed out on that I had to ask myself. I said, you know, when I look at my pops and he, he would always tell me about some of his friends that he would lose contact with at 17, 18. And then you look up at 34, 36 and he's still doing the same thing. And me having that perspective helped me say, you know what? I'm not missing out on nothing. Because if I look up and I'm 36, 37, doing the same thing I was doing at 19, 20, and I'm around the same people, there's going to be so much bitterness in me, and it's going to shed probably within this, the circle of people that I'm around. And I said, you know what? I will work like a maniac. And then my body caught up with me and was like, you got to slow it down. But literally, you know, if, if I worked at Quiznos, say I had a shift, and sometimes he would work, work as like, like literally 12-hour shifts. And, and and I will come home and, and you probably think like it's a sandwich job, but no, I cannot stand the smell of carbonara. I like literally get sick <laughs> to think about that. But to be there and you're always on your feet, you're always moving around. I, I, I know what that feels like to come home and be like, well, I don't have anything left to give. But then the other question is, what other choice do you have? How bad do you want it? And sometimes it wasn't even so much like I wish I can give you this this magical story how I would go to work and come home and I had this vivid image about what the end, end, end thing would be, right? You know, I, I saw it and I didn't. There was a lot of times where I was literally fueling myself off of a whim, fueling, my, fueling myself off of, you know, whatever's on the other side's got to be better than this. So that literally became my fuel. So there was times where I remember I was working at Quiznos during my lunch break and I came up with the idea, this is during the MySpace age. I came up with the idea. I said, you know what? I know HTML. I know how to make those, remember those little letters and numbers that come down? I was like, what if I offered this as a service and I just jumped on MySpace and just added a bunch of people, right? In a 25, 30 mile radius. So I worked at Quiznos 10 a.m. to about 5 p.m. Came home from about, I, I, I'm not even exaggerating because I was so excited about making money, rap money, away from Quiznos. About 6 p.m. to 7 a.m. the next morning. I sit on that computer. And I was sitting up here making a new MySpace page. And, you know, this obviously is advice that probably can't, tra it could probably can translate to something else today. But at that time, it really for me, I didn't look at it like I was grinding. I looked at, looked at that like this is, this is necessary for me to get where I want to get. I don't want to work at Quiznos forever. You know, and, and me working on that and, and having a specific plan within the first week of doing that, I got my first MySpace money from a rapper in Arizona who wanted an HTML for his, uh, his design, he wanted it to be like uh, uh, a Western theme. And I was like, okay, I'll make your Western theme. I got some tumbleweeds and all of that. And he sent, me the, he sent me the PayPal money. That taste of money away from my job that felt independent, it almost became an addiction at that point. So really, the, the whole thing, the whole premise that I want to make sure that I, I, I give to you is that the time that you come home, you know, Gary Vee really beats people over the head about this, about, you know, if you got time to watch a loss, you got time to watch the game. And I'm a, one of the biggest Laker fans you're going to find. But those highlights wrap it up for me. All right. I don't have to see every single game, especially not this season. because We've been, you know, it's been kind of varied, but I don't have to see every single game. The things that I love, I can still love them, but I can love them in in in. You know, I can love them at, at, a, at a different speed so that I can really get what I want to get done. You know, when I was 17, uh, 18, I had a decision. We either going to buy this NBA 2K3 with Allen Iverson on the cover, or we going to get this MTV music generator for PlayStation, me and my buddy. 17. I knew it. I said, we can, we can play this game as long as we want. And I was on Dreamcast, <laughs> right? But it's those decisions that mean everything. So when you're coming home, and, and, and like I said, I don't want to give you the, the, the mentality that you got to grind 20, 21, 7, 24, 7, but you have to be very stingy with your time if you want to get this done. It's not going to just happen because you want it bad enough. You got to actually put feet to pavement, sit in front of the laptop and, and, and be the, 
you know, the lame that stays at home when all the other homies are going out. So many times I was that guy, but I had to be that guy so I could be this guy today. So, yeah. <laughs>